Hi, Happy New Year. Um, I promised you a video video for Section 4.5 that we were working on right before um, we went on break. And uh, I thought I would just quickly go over a little bit of what we said and then finish it up. And then I have um, another couple of videos I'm going to just make on, I have three like sample problems that uh, to show you how to compute probabilities um, using the Z table or using um, integration or using many tabs. So there's lots of ways to compute uh, the probabilities. And we've been used to integrating with the other functions, but uh, sometimes I think it's just easier to use the table if you get used to it. So anyway, I'll just, I'll, I would try to make this not very long. Um, just at first reminding you, we were uh, in 4.5 talking about the normal distribution and it's pro it is the most special of the continuous distributions where remember we said continuous distribution it supports defined over a range of values um, normal is the bell-shaped curve and I was showing you my money that has um, the bell-shaped curve on it there's Gauss right there um, so sometimes it's called the Gaussian curve instead of just a normal curve um, this was all just explaining why the normal curve is so popular um, if you add enough of any random variable, eventually it converges to normality, but um, that's more for when we get back. Uh, let me just remind you, it has a very not nice density function. So here it is right here. Um, you can see mu right there is where the center of the bell curve is going to be, and the sigma right here is the standard deviation of the distribution, and that really measures the spread. So this is just the curve um, that it, it's always going to look like this, where the center of this guy is at mu and the spread is sigma. And if I want to find probabilities, I just integrate that curve over the region of interest. And again, I would put in mu and sigma here for the values before I integrate. So down here, I'm just, I'm just saying, yeah, uh, if I go ahead and integrate this for any positive sigma, uh, this always integrates to 1, so it's always, this guy's always a legal density function. He's always positive, and his area over all real numbers is uh, is 1. Okay, so um, I just show you some graphs of them. You know, as you change mu, like down here, mu is 1, sigma is 2. You can kind of see what happens. It shifts. Here's the center then at 1. And it has a standard deviation of uh, two. The bigger the standard deviation, it gets it it gets fatter, and when standard deviation is smaller, it gets it gets thinner. Um, here's just a sample problem. Um, we have a normal curve with a mu of 67.5 and a sigma of two. I want to know the probability that um, I pick a random person and they're between 66 and 72 inches tall. I plug in mu, I plug in sigma, oh, there, sigma, sigma squared there, and so all I'm doing is integrating between 66 and 72 the normal curve function. So, I mean, that's always going to be legal. You can always just integrate that guy to find a probability. Um, we talked in class that the nicest normal curve is if, if mu is 0 and sigma 1. I'm just putting those in. For my density function it kind of makes it look at least a little bit nicer I think so notice here when um, when mu is 0 then I don't have x minus mu up there and then when sigma is 1 I get a like a 1 is sitting right there and this is really times 1 squared right there so um, it, at least it simplifies nicer and it's very common that we use the capital letter Z for a random uh, standard normal variable. Um, it's just any book you see or, or anything you read, Z is very commonly um, the symbol used for a standard normal. We don't use X or Y or anything else, usually Z. Okay, so I think that's all the further we had gotten. Um, maybe I showed you a little bit about the table, but um, actually I'm going to pull up, well I'll do one of these and then actually I already wrote solutions and I'll show you those. Um, to find the probability, this is a nice, when I use z, I know I'm, I have a standard normal curve, and I gave you the standard normal table. If I want to find the probability that z is less than negative 1.25, uh, 
that's this area right in here. I go down to my table and I see negative 1.25. So this is um, goes to the tenths digit and this is the hundredths digit. And I look right there and there's the area under the curve. Um, actually, I, I know this one right away because by symmetry, the probability of being bigger than 1.25 is the same as being less than 1.25. Those things are the same. Um, less than 1.25. Well, I know this area here, so it's just going to be 1 minus, I think this is 1, 1056, right? I should have looked better. Yeah, 1056. It's just going to be 1 minus 1056 here. Okay, and again, I could be integrating if I wanted to. I'm just showing you how to use the table. Um, let me put up, let me pull up the solutions. So um, I already put this in Angel, but here are the solutions to the problems on that page. So this is the one we had just looked at. Oops, I have to say ink pen. Come on, pen. Yeah, okay, so this is that little area there. And um, in the center, I was just showing you, I could integrate and get the same values. Um, down here, I just, you can check, I already found the values for, for example, z between 1 and negative 1. Um, I look at the probability of being less than 1, that's this value. And I subtract off the probability of being less than negative 1, that's this value. And then I get the amount in between. So you can see between 1 negative one and one standard deviations from the center there's about 68 percent area in there and so i did another one too just so you could compare this is less than 2.16 and this is less than negative 0.83 and then i subtract to get the area in between um, and this is by rule of thumb if you ever wanted to know i mean within one standard deviation right here is about 68 percent of your data if you go within two that's about 95 percent if you go within three that's 99 seven percent it's nice to know um i did a couple problems too uh, this is already on the next page um the weight of oranges uh normally distribute with a mean of 16 standard deviation of two what's the probability we grab an orange and it weighs more than 17 ounces so what could I do? I could just say probably W is greater than 17. Oh, I'm using the, oh, what I'm going to do, I guess I didn't even say up here. I'm going to convert this to a Z-score. That must be on the lectures page. Um, let's go back to the lecture. Yes, that's why we're a little bit. What I'm going to do is conversion right here. I mean, um, you guys know um, transformations. All I'm doing is taking my random variable X. I don't know why it's not. Well, I'm taking my random variable x, I'm subtracting off mu right here, and I'm dividing by sigma. So all I'm doing is a transformation. I'm, If I have any random variable, any normal random variable x, with a mean mu and a sigma as a standard deviation, what I'm going to do is shift that normal curve over to the center. So it's centered at zero with a standard deviation of one. All, all I'm doing, all this is right here is a transformation. If you take your whatever standard norm whatever normal you have subtract off its mean divide by its standard deviation you get a nice z a nice normal zero one. Oh, i have my pen back yay okay so why would i do this because i want to maybe do a problem using the table instead of integrating that's what this is going to allow you to do to do that conversion it, again it's just a transformation i'm shifting u and i'm dividing by sigma to squish it so it has a nice normal zero one shape to it okay so there were my problems again let's go back over um, yeah so that's what I'm doing so I'm going to convert to a z-score to do this problem so all I do is take my value 17 I'm going to subtract off well, let's get this I'm going to subtract off the mean divide by the standard deviation that gives me a z-score so really I'm saying what's the probability being more than half a standard deviation away from the center you know, to the right side. To use my table, I'm going to do 1 minus. So the table always tells me the probability of being less than. So this is the little area I get. I could have integrated it, right? Here's 16. Here's the um, 
standard deviation, there's the mean, there's the standard deviation, integrate it from 17 to infinity, we get the same number. Or I could do this in mini tab. It's very nice. Just open up mini tab. Uh, I'm already kind of long, so I won't show you on this slide. I'll, I'll show you on another video. Um, just typing these values in mini tab gives a really nice picture and it will shade the area and then show you the value too. So mini tab, integrating, whichever. Um, I just did another problem down here, same thing. Here's the um, time it takes a cell to divide is normally distributed with a mean of an hour, standard deviation of five minutes. What's the probability a dividing time will take more than 65 minutes? So there's my distribution. What I'm gonna do is standardize, subtract mean, divide by standard deviation. That's a z-score, look it up in the table. Or I could integrate. Uh, there you see your standard deviation, there's your mean, there's your standard deviation. I integrate, or I could go to mini tab. Um, going backwards, the table tells you how much area is in here. So let's say uh, I'm trying to find the value that leaves 9911 area in the center right here. So if I go back to my Z table, I can look over here. I don't think I can write on this. Here is 99. Can you kind of see my little pen? Um, here's 9911. You can see what value that is. 2.37. There it is right there. 2.37. Um, if I get integrate up to 2.37, uh, that's how much area is under the curve up to the left point. So let's go back here. You can see that's what I, that's why I got the 2.37. Same deal. I want to leave out 0.495 in the right tail. So in the left tail, I need was that like 90 no, about 95 to the left. I go over here. Uh, 95 to the left. So I write, yeah, 1.6, here we go, 1.65, leaves about 95 to the left, there it is. Okay, so um, I think I did another problem here, but I'm going to pull up, um, I just did some more sample problems. I think when I pull up uh, the couple examples I, I have, then I can go through those and not make this much longer. But again, I'm just showing there's lots of ways to do a Z table. You can always integrate, you can use mini tab. Um, it's really just getting used to uh, area under the curve with a nasty looking curve. Okay, so let me close this now and I will post it in YouTube.